Many of you have asked me about the most aggressive attacking opening for white, which is at the same time solid, meaning that even if your opponent knows the right defense, you still maintain a good position. And there you go, today we're gonna be talking about the Belgrade Gambit. After the first moves pawn e4, pawn e5, you continue with knight of 3, black defends this pawn by going knight of c6, so far these are just standard moves, and now you play knight to c3. Instead of bishop c4, which is more popular, you just develop the other knight. And at first it looks like just a developing move, but you're setting it up for some of the really cool traps. In most of the cases, your opponent will respond knight of f6, which leads to the Belgrade gambit, which we want. Sometimes they'll play bishop c5, which we'll talk about later as well. But how about knight to f6? Now you play pawn d4, opening up the center and attacking this pawn twice, therefore they'll always take it. But now instead of recapturing, you all of a sudden jump forward with your knight to d5. And this position is highly tricky. Just think about that for a second. Imagine yourself in your opponent's shoes. How would you play here as black? Which moves would you consider? That's just gonna show you how tricky this line is. Because most natural moves by black, such as knight takes d5, is just wrong. Just think, just imagine. This also, another popular move, knight takes e4, objectively is okay, but in real practical games, it's very dangerous. Now, do you wanna know the best move by black? Ready? It's the move knight to b4. The move which is recommendation of Stockfish and obviously it's very counterintuitive, you'll pretty much never face it in real life. So let's come back to this position. The most common moves by black are either taking this pawn or taking the knight. Let's start with knight takes c4 as that's the most common move. Now here you can play queen e2, which is slightly tricky and I recommend it especially for blitz, it works really well. Now you pin down the knight to the king as well as you attack it. Therefore, they need to defend it, so they play pawn to f5, but then you jump forward with the other knight and you attack this knight once again. The knight is still pinned down to the king, therefore it can never move from this e4 square. Now, what can black do? All of a sudden, you start this massive quick attack with both knights controlling a bunch of squares in their position, you know, putting threats here and there, plus your queen is active along the e-file. And even though black can defend this position, you can see that it's quite dangerous and both your knights are very annoying. Some of your opponents, just to illustrate how dangerous it can get for black, might play knight e7, trying to cover their king as well as to trade off this active knight from e4, from d5, I'm sorry. But then they're actually losing the game on the spot, because then you take knight takes e4 and they're lost. If they take knight takes d5, that leads to a really beautiful sneaky check mate knight to d6. That's a double check, that's the trick, and therefore it's also a checkmate. If instead of taking on d5, your opponent decides to take the other knight, then you win with the right hook, queen to h5. Now, and as he covers, you swing over to e5, and you just overwhelm your opponent with lots of different threats. You're attacking this rook on h8, knight takes c7 is coming, which would attack the king and the rook, knight to f6 check is coming just as well, and you simply have way too many threats for black to handle. All right, that covers the move knight to e7, but what's the right move for black? Well, the most common move by black is bishop to e7 playing this move and we're going to talk about that in a second. But it's also wrong and it's also losing the game. Now the correct move by black is once again super counterintuitive, it's a stockfish recommendation pawn to d3, this very sudden pawn sacrifice. It leads to a very complicated position, but as I checked the database, only players above 2100 usually play that move, and not all of them, but just some of them. So I think that you'll almost never face it in real life, and that's why I don't think there is much sense to dive into those complicated variations. Anyway, very often white is fine there as well. But let's come back to the most common move, bishop e7, which definitely is a more human move to play, just covering the king and getting ready to castle. Then you happily take here on e4, queen takes, you're still putting some pressure, therefore they try to hide away. Then you play a bishop d3, you keep attacking. Right now, thanks to this battery, you're threatening queen takes h7, so they have to play g6, which actually exposes the king more. And it also weakens this square, and you can make use of that by going bishop h6, this time hitting the rook. And here in this position, usually they go rook e8, hoping for some sort of counterattack against your havoc pieces, but actually this position is already lost for black. You just castle, and somehow you have still a lot of threats, and black is defenseless. Like in some variations, you can go bishop c4 going after the king, plus you can always put pressure along the e-file and, you know, try to attack all these pieces. If they ever try to counterattack, let's say with bishop g5, which is probably the most common move here by black, that actually fails, it's a miscalculation by black. Uh, you just take over here and uh, you win the game. I mean, if they take it with a queen, they're gonna drop the rook on e8. It'll be left undefended. 
So that doesn't work. And if they take your queen, you take theirs. And currently you're a piece up. On the next move, you'll probably pick up this pawn or this rook. Or you'll pick the pawn with the knight. And you just got a winning material advantage. Let's also have a little challenge for you. What if in this position, black goes bishop f8, trying to counterattack your queen as well as your bishop? What would you do in this case? Let it be a puzzle of the day. Please think about this. And if you can find the right way for white, please write it down in the comments below. We've covered the move knight takes e4, which seems a little bit too greedy for black after that. White is capable of playing queen e2, putting pressure here. And unless black is really well prepared and really knows what they're doing, they're gonna go down badly. Now, the second most common move by black here is knight takes d5, which strangely enough is also wrong. Now, what's wrong with this move? Well, after you recapture, you hit the other knight, forcing it to retreat, which gives you more tempo and some space advantage as well, thanks to this advanced pawn on d5. Now, your knight is controlling this square e5, therefore he can't go there, and he's left with a couple options which are all not ideal. Let's start off with knight to b4, which seems like a more aggressive move for black to play, which attacks this pawn on d5. Well, then you can just develop your bishop while de defending these pawns simultaneously. Your opponents in most cases do the same, play bishop c5, but then after you castle and he castles, although it's at first sight it may seem like the position is more or less symmetric, like this knight on b4 is really misplaced. And you just attack it by playing pawn to a3, forcing it all the way back to a6. Then you can keep pushing with b4, chasing away this bishop. If it goes away, you can then grab this pawn on d4. If it goes to b6, like all these pieces are kind of out of the game, which leaves their king side really undefended, because there are no pieces left there really around the king. You just go bishop g5, very uncomfortable. They have to cover by f6, but then it also opens up this diagonal. So you just keep attacking with d6, check to the king once again from this bishop. And after the king moves, I mean, actually you just dominate completely. If you just move the bishop back to f4, I mean, you totally dominate. Black almost can't move, all these pieces can't go out, like, you know, they're almost paralyzed completely. But if you want to finish the game in style, here's the way to do that. If you want to feel like Mikhail Tal, then you go knight e5. You just go into this all-out winning attack, and you don't hesitate to sacrifice some material. Now, from here, the knight is ready to penetrate to f7 or something like this. They can't take it because that would expose their queen. So the only way for them is to grab the bishop. But then you bring the queen out to h5 with a lot of different threats. Knight f7, maybe bishop d3, which would together with a queen, you know, threaten queen takes h7 checkmate. And if they play something like pawn to d6, that leads to a very nice smother checkmate. Not smother, but just like very accurate and nice checkmate. By the way, the beauty of this opening is that you don't even have to memorize all these variations. You see that in many of these lines, you just develop pieces and castle and like your moves are very natural. While black situation is a lot trickier, they have to find like very hard counterintuitive moves to stay in the game. For example, if this knight moves backwards somewhere to b8 or e7, doesn't matter, e7 is more common, then you just take this pawn on d4 with your queen. And you completely dominate actually. This position is already winning, even though it may be hard to believe. Uh, but like in a real practical game it's winning because like black is having a hard time developing his position normally and you just develop however you like for example d6 you just play bishop d3 castle you know rookie one bishop g5 you play very natural moves so as i said you don't even have to memorize these lines while black's task is a lot harder for example let's say they just try to somehow untangle their pieces and develop they go knight g6 you castle now they gotta do something you're threatening rookie one check right they often play bishop e7, but that actually hands this pawn on g7. You can happily grab it. And they can no longer castle and their position is destroyed anyway. Sometimes bishop f6 gives them hope because they think that, oh, maybe I can somehow trap this queen or something like that. But then you counterattack by rook e1 check to the king. And although they can cover by one of their minor pieces, the piece will be pinned down to the king. So it's not good for them. And funnily enough, most of them play king to d7 trying to, you know, keep their pieces available. But here... It, you know, it fails nicely due to bishop f5, a rare check made by a bishop. Another question you may have is what to do if someone tries out this opening line against you, which may very well happen after they watch this very same video, all right? So, what if someone plays this against you? As I mentioned earlier, objectively speaking, the correct move is knight to b4, suggested by computer, but it's more complicated, and I would not recommend that you go there. The easiest way for black is just to play a little bit passive, but very solid move, bishop e7. You just ignore kind of all these things, you don't try to take any of them, you just want to play bishop e7 and castle to safety so that your position is secure. Moreover, if he goes bishop f4, trying to create threats to your c7 pawn, you still don't take on d5. 
Now, just as before, this move is still wrong. If you want to take here, he's recapturing with a pawn, attacks your other knight, gets space advantage, and all those other cool things for white. So instead, you just go d6, blocking this diagonal for the bishop, and your position is still safe. So on the next move, after whatever they do, you just castle, your position is fine. If you're annoyed by these active knights, you can always trade them off uh, on the next moves, and you have a very nice position. I mean, it's objectively equal, but you're not in danger, everything's fine. That covers knight to f6, but also you'll be facing the move bishop to c5 nearly as often. It actually fails due to nice tactics which I analyzed in this video, which you may wish to check out next. Also, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, joining the Igor Nation. As you may see in the comments below, a lot of people who follow the channel improve their chess results significantly, and I hope that you'll be one of them. Take care.